All right, guys, we're at the airport now and getting ready to fit the new rudder. I went ahead and put the old rudder back on so we could look at it just a little more carefully, and I attached the control horn with a bungee cord so we can see what happens when we move the wheel. It freely opens up just like it did before. If we move it the other way, it just kind of locks in place. So that's pretty clear. This is the way that we found it with the control rod fitted on top. The thing that we were concerned about was the measurement between the control horn and the fuselage. These are supposed to be at the same level, and in fact, uh, the control horn is a little higher. So we'll have to set the new rudder back to the appropriate level. That may change the geometry a little bit. So I have the new rudder just provisionally fitted in place. There's a Clico on top and bottom just kind of holding things. And we're just trying to confirm that everything is at the appropriate level here. This is a little bit challenging because we can't take the rudder through a range of motion. Those Clicos will bind. So you can see here that the control horn is at the same level as the beginning of the fuselage, which is what it shows in the plans. I've taken the rudder back off of the airplane, and now that we know that everything fits, I just need to take the rudder back to the shop and put about a thousand rivets in the hinge, and we should be just about done with the rudder. All right, guys, back in the shop, we have located the hinge in the correct position by hanging it on the airplane. It's clicked in place temporarily. I need to go ahead and drill, clamp, deburr, and rivet each one of these little holes. Compared to the plans multiple times, we have to use CCP 42 stainless steel blind rivets, and there should be one in each tab all the way down. So let's get that done. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna locate my holes and I'm gonna use a punch. This is a spring-loaded punch that makes it really easy to locate your holes for your drill. It just goes pop and leaves a nice little hole right there. All right, so we got a whole lot of Clecos in here, but we are not done yet. We still have a lot of cleanup to do. So what I'm gonna be doing is removing all the Clecos. We're gonna deburr each and every one of these holes and then clamp it back together and rivet. Okay, so I went ahead and deburred the inside and outside edges of the hinge, the inside and outside edges of the rudder. I went ahead and deburred the edge along the seams, and everything fits together just perfectly. So now the only thing left to do is put all these rivets in. So we'll use our Clico tool to easily remove. You'll have your CCP42 rivet, which should fit fairly snugly in the hole. And then just making sure it's nice and straight as you're squeezing. There's one, and it should go on two. And we'll just do that about three, six more times. Well, I'll tell you what, hand pulling rivets will wear you out after you do about 40 of them. So <laughs> if I decide to build a kit, I think I'm gonna have to upgrade to an air compressed one, but it does a job for a small job like this. So everything looks good. I think we're ready to install this on the airplane. Now, the one thing we're still waiting on is the control rod. I ordered a brand new control rod from Sonix. They didn't have one in stock, so they did have to build one. They told me it should be here in about another week from now. So we'll get this thing reassembled back on the airplane as soon as possible. Uh, after that, we'll get it painted and then we'll go flying. So you guys have a great day.